So when we left off in Arizona, uh, we were just finishing the flooring, and I wanted to show you how that came out, kind of finished product. Um, and, and I think, I don't remember exactly uh, uh, what footage we had, but you know, we were doing this entryway, we put the nice metal on here. Um, so the entire floor is, is finished, and it was definitely the thing that took the longest and the hardest, the most hours but we really like how it came out. And I will say as far as the install of the floor, we got a little bit out of alignment across the whole RV. So we ended up with some tiny little gaps here and there, but honestly it, it's worked out great. Uh, we really liked it. And the only other thing I could say about the floor is this, this flooring is really thin. And so we have been able to see some of the waves and, and things in the floor where we had to work on it. So we just kind of live with that. Most people don't notice it, but we, if you look real close, you can see it. So yeah, we were, we're really glad we did the whole thing. And the one thing we had to sort out was with the slide outs. The slide out does tend, a slide out can scratch the floor when it's coming in and out. So we found a, a simple solution. We use these rugs. We put run, one rug on each side and when the slide out comes in and out, just lands on the rug and doesn't scratch the floor. Okay, so we're gonna start the, the full on tour with the interior. Um, right at the right at the entryway, and one in, one thing we did is when we when we moved the batteries, we did uh, make a compartment where the batteries were under here, just where we actually now use that for our dirty shoes. Um, so that was nice. So we're going to start here in the front. And there's two places up here that we've done a lot of work. One of them is this entryway cabinet. And this is a, a really neat thing. And she's gonna show how it all works. So first of all, it's first of all, it is a cabinet tied to the TV. And I can push a button over here on the wall. And then the TV goes down and hides. But also, this is a cabinet in the front. Uh, the right hand side is a door, and in there we have pens and pencils and checkbooks, stuff like that. And the left side is not a door, but a table. So now, once you have that up, you can shut the door and you can put the top back on. And then we can slide the, the chair up, and we have a nice desk. And with our top on it looks like a nice entryway table and underneath here we have electricity so we have docking station or hard drives and stuff like that uh, we've uh, put an outlet on the side and so yeah that has worked out really nice for us uh, right above that is where we keep all our office supplies and so we have almost a full-on office um, in there so this uh, this is the next amazing thing we did this TV is on hydraulic struts and inside there we put our printer and our computers and anything else you want to put in there but that all fits in there um, the other neat thing we did is we we don't really play a lot of video games but we do like the Wii Fit and we put the sensor for that right up here and we can use this big TV in the center uh, to do the Wii Fit board and bowling and that type of stuff so we've used these side cabinets to hold all the electronics and and yeah, so that's all working out great. Another neat thing we did is we replaced the old couch with a proper reclining sofa. And so it's got dual recliners and it's got a space to keep the remote controls and stuff like that. So let's look at the rest of our space. We really love the size of this kitchen uh, because we've got this extra countertop over here that's big enough uh, where we 
have extra counter space and we even have our ice maker out of our boat we brought in here and we have a convection microwave so it's a microwave and an oven and we bake and we microwave and it works great for both really like that it has a double sink and cabinets above and then we got this side-by-side -side fridge which is really nice and we also have a freezer down below and then in these cabinets is where we found space for our spice racks and we wanted to have all our spices that we had in our house and so we've got two of these and we fit pretty much all our spices in there and what else we do have storage in the slide above the table and above the sofa there so obviously these are nice drawers but let me show you some of the other things we did here um, we put trash and recycle on a pull out sorry about our full trash yeah, that's okay that's <laughs> how trash is supposed to be right in uh, here there are pull outs or there's a pull out that we keep the pots and pans on which is real handy so we fit all our pots and pans and a griddle in there and then under here these are really deep and there's the dog food there's a toaster there's a blender and on this side we have a crock pot and our food uh what do you call it the thing that sucks all the food air saver. out of the food saver yeah sucks all the air this out this is a little stuck right now because of the crock pot, the crock pot. Mm -hmm. that's okay we can see it it pulls out So this washer and dryer we absolutely love it took us a while to get this guy and you know you pay top dollar for this one but it is the biggest washing machine that you can buy that'll fit in this space uh, which means it actually holds enough clothes I mean, we can we it covers all our needs we can do uh, we can do a decent sized load wash all our clothes we can fit our sheets our we can fit one blanket at a time pretty much in it or the sheets in it but it'll hold everything and it washes and dries great and it typically takes about three and a half hours to do the whole thing so you can set this thing and come back a little later and right now we did our clothes are dry in there um, just did a load earlier uh, and then we still had all these big drawers underneath um, we also put in a proper shower head uh, on a on a bar there so you can get the shower head all the way up into the alcove above the shower so you can get that shower head up to about six foot three so very tall people could shower in here so that uh that was a nice upgrade also we didn't do anything here we might have liked to uh, take that old yellowing sink out but we're more about function than about looks and so everything that, that made a difference for function we have done but um, we haven't worried about the sink yet um other than maybe the toilet we didn't like the look of the old toilet we got a new proper nice toilet um so that is that is replaced after that we get into the bedroom area so you got a queen size bed in here and little nightstands on either side i really hate these days how they do these rvs with king size beds and then there's no room on the side for anything um, so here you have enough room to there's there's drawers on both sides there's room to store things so that is really good and you can walk all the way around the bed and then elizabeth's pride and joy the wine fridge um that obviously back in the day they put a tv in there but now it's a wine fridge and we got these big closet doors um which uh there's a lot of space behind there we got all these drawers here and then the far left side is a laundry hamper and we find the laundry hampers not really all that needed anymore because we can throw the laundry right into the washing machine and do our laundry every day pretty much but that's uh that's the interior, I think. Did we miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. So let's go outside and look at some of the things we did out there. So outside, uh, we've seen the RV, you know, when we started working on it. But uh, since, since we did that, we did put brand new tires on it. And if you haven't done new tires on a Class A RV like this, these are the 22 fives. These are basically semi-truck tires. And, and you're lucky to find them, I mean, you're doing a good job if they're 600 to 800 a piece. So yeah, we, uh, 
definitely sticker shock, but all new tires on it, so that that was nice. Um, first compartment is our electrical compartment, and this is where we made the biggest investment, maybe right there with the tires, but uh, it, probably more. Uh, we have a 3000 watt Victron Multi Plus inverter converter charger up here, and down here we have 600 amp hours usable. Uh, or seven and a half kilowatt hours of lithium power. And these are Bluetooth lithiums, so they do uh, synchronize with, to the phone and you can, you can monitor them and you can see the individual cells, how they're performing. So these babies are awesome. And what that means is that you can run off grid for days at a time off the power in those uh, and, and be comfortable and use everything. It's, it's really, really been great. Lots of storage. Here's where we put our freezer, our extra freezer. And we even have our Traeger smoker in here with the wood pellets. And still have lots of room for bins and back down the center, which you can't see. We got bins in there, and it's a place in there where our table fits. Where'd the table go? Oh, it's, it's over, over there. there. Oh, okay. So we have our table, we pull it out. Put, it our, put our grill on it. The grill's electric and we can plug it in right here, so. Since we never know quite, and that's under a slide, so you have to duck down. Since we never know what climate we might be going to, we uh, have summer and winter clothes that we put our extra clothes in there. Now, uh, you'll notice the, the grate here. This RV does have a heat pump and it's a basement heat pump. So two good things about that. Uh, one is that you can heat and cool the RV with that. And so if you are, like we are right now, parked for a long period of time, we don't have to use hardly any propane because we can heat and cool electrically. Um, so that's a huge thing. But we do also have a gas heater. And, and so if it does get really cold, this guy becomes pretty much not effective at about freezing. And so if it gets really cold, we can use our gas heat. So we're here on the other side of the RV and the very first compartment I call the electrical compartment and there's enough room in there to fit our cables. We have an extra extension cord in there, different adapters if you don't have a 50 amp service. Um, that's all in there. The water heater is behind here and the wet bay is a disaster uh, but it's not meant to look good. It's meant to be functional and, uh, and everything is here that you need uh, to to run water any way you want. Uh, also, we have our macerator pump in here and we have 60 feet of this hose. And so if we're staying at somebody's house, we pop the macerator pump on there. I've got a 12 volt plug for it. Switch that baby on and we can pump out our tank uh, up to 60 feet. But we also have sewer hose for gravity flush. So we can go either way, gravity flush or macerator pump. Um, as far as water coming in, uh, we have this routed through two filters before they ever comes into the RV. The first one is a cartridge filter. The next one is a carbon filter. Uh, so if we're in any, any potentially sketchy water situations, um, we have two filters before it ever comes in the RV, plus another filter inside for drinking water. So, um, so pretty good uh, water filtration. And we even if we say do Mexico, we even have a pure filter and we can put it through that too and have it quadruple filtered. So, so we're doing good on water. Okay, so this side of the RV has just got a lot more storage. And I like this little compartment for those blocks. So even though we do have hydraulic stabilizing on this RV, um, you can only get so much clearance, uh, you know, if you're on a parked on a slope surface. So we can use those to give us a little more height on either side. Also under here, um, notice we have an air compressor. We have a good size air compressor that can do enough pressure to actually air up these big tires. So uh, if we don't have to go out to get the tires aired up if we need to do just air pressures. Uh, next compartment over is a seven and a half kilowatt generator. Um, she's purring along pretty good. And then the next one is the propane. And so that's all the all the bins on this and side. And the already. propane holds how many gallons? It holds 20 gallons. Okay. And like I said, because we almost everything can run on electric, the only thing you need propane for when we're parked right now is a stove. So we could go for like a year on that thing just running the stove. All right, so um, 
just to, uh, over, in general, uh, we got two slides. Notice that you have slide toppers and awnings on the windows. So really of all the features on this RV, of course we're in Oregon, so it always wants to rain. So here's the other slide, slide topper, awning. We have an awning here. This awning is, uh, I believe, a 2017 uh, awning, so it's much newer than the RV is. Uh, this is the side of the RV that cosmetically is the ugliest, uh, especially here where my brother was a former owner. He put in a dog door when he owned it. And so this has been, you know, repaired now, but it needs the fiberglass work to fix the cut line. And uh, we were figuring that if we get down to Mexico, that would be our time to um, get that done very cheaply. And they're real good at that kind of work down there. It'd be a time to get this thing cosmetically fixed up, but... Uh, really, our focus is on function, and this RV, man, it, it is awesome uh, as far as its function. So this is the uh, a GM workhorse chassis. So this is a gas RV. It's a 22,000-pound chassis, and that means that as far as towing capacity, it's actually only about 4,000 uh, towing capacity with the weight of the RV the way it is. Uh, this is not a light thing, and, and it's loaded down pretty good so oh yeah so my last uh, thing i was going to talk about is um it's kind of a uh, interesting debate is when you get an older rv do you want a gas rv or a diesel pusher and almost everyone says you want a diesel pusher and there's two reasons but one of the big reasons for a diesel pusher is just the quality of the rv um pretty much if they build a quality rv they put a diesel push you know they put a diesel in it so the better rvs are diesels but I've noticed, and you'll notice watching my YouTube channels, the people with older diesels are starting to struggle with getting them serviced. Uh, not everywhere wants to service an older diesel. And the nice thing about this RV being an, a 2005, it's getting a little older, but it's a GM V8, and anybody and their brother works on GM V8s. So you can go to any shop, and it's just, to them, it's like a pickup truck engine, you know, so, um, so you can get it serviced just about everywhere. And from a maintenance standpoint, and reliability this engine has been absolutely bulletproof and solid it is never hicked up it starts on the first crank it runs great it has plenty of power and so uh, so really for the sake of easy maintenance uh, and service long term you know it's a commercial chassis a commercial engine but it's still a, a pretty basic uh, easy to work on thing and so we really like that we have a gas uh, engine and and then uh, i'll say one more thing also about that basement air conditioning it does leave a lot of space on the roof uh, because there's no air conditioners up there there is a tremendous amount of room for solar so this is the only thing we haven't done is solar on this rv and that's because um, thus far we were going up into the north yeah look out here and you'll see that uh Yeah, it's uh, not really a great place for solar. So we're like, well, if we go somewhere where we feel like we need solar, we'll put it on there. But um, we've got all the storage when we're traveling, power storage, and we have a generator. So we don't even need to run the generator really unless we're gonna be traveling for more than several days because that's enough power there that, um, that it, it could virtually never run out. So, um, so yeah, um, solar is definitely an option. There is a small solar panel that came on from the factory. It was like a battery tender. So it's useless, but what it does is give you a, a cable chase. Um, there's actually a spot up there where you could use that old um, wire to pull new wire down through to the electrical panel. So um, so when it is time to put solar on this, it's the perfect setup for that, the perfect place to put it.